So you want to get better at math, but every time you try, it just feels like you're not a math person, right? Movies, school, and even teachers made it feel like math is only for people with genius IQs or some magical math gene. But guess what? That's a myth. Even Laurent Schwartz, one of the greatest French mathematicians of the 20th century, said he felt slow in school and often doubted himself. You're not alone. 93% of US adults have felt math anxiety. So it's not you, it's how you've been taught. In this video, I'm sharing five proven steps to help you truly ace math. Step two and step five are my personal favorites. But here's the catch. If you skip any part, you might just find yourself falling right back into the rabbit hole. So stick around. Step one, reducing careless mistakes. Track your common errors. There's no point knowing everything if you're losing marks over tiny mistakes, like forgetting a minus sign in algebra. Keep a running list of these recurring slip-ups. Two, build your mistake profile. Note down patterns. Do you often mistype numbers? Skip units, forget brackets? This list becomes your personal what not to do guide. Three, review before the exam. Read your mistake list before every test. Awareness is half the battle. If you know what you're likely to mess up, you're less likely to do it again. Fourth, practice under exam conditions. Simulate real test environments with past papers. This exposes how you perform under pressure and highlights mistakes you'd make in the actual exam. Five, study sample solutions. Learn how model answers structure their steps. Mirror their clarity and logic to improve how you present your own solutions. Let me share with you my favorite way of practicing a question that doesn't make you feel like you want to blame your zodiac sign for being poor in math. Step two, AAA method. This powerful method works well for you and it's called attempt after answer. When I come across a tough math question, I don't jump into solving it right away. I pause for a moment to mentally plan how I might approach it. But here's the thing, if I truly have no clue where to begin, I don't waste time struggling endlessly. I simply look at the solution. That's right, I allow myself to give up, but only temporarily. Instead of guessing or getting frustrated, I study the answer carefully. I take time to understand not just what the solution is, but why each step was taken. Once I've grasped the logic behind it, I set the answer aside and try the question again, this time on my own. I write down each step and I don't give up too quickly. I make a real effort to apply what I just learned. After completing the question, I compare my attempt with the original solution. If I got something wrong or can't remember how a particular step works, I go back, relearn the concept, and try again. I keep doing this until I'm able to solve the problem independently and confidently. There are a couple of reasons why I find this approach extremely effective and efficient. First, it prevents me from spending too much time spinning my wheels on a problem I don't understand. If I tried to brute force my way through every tough question, I might waste hours without making real progress. And sometimes I wouldn't even be working from the right chapter. By reviewing the correct method early on, I can spend that time more productively, practicing more questions and learning from each one. Now, I'm not saying you should never try a problem on your own. There's definitely value in struggling through a question. But if you're totally stuck, the goal should shift from solving to learning. The aim of practice isn't to get every question right the first time. It's to understand the material deeply enough to get it right eventually. Think about it this way. Imagine one person spends 20 minutes on a question, gets it wrong, and moves on frustrated. Another person looks at the solution right away, learns it, then successfully solves the same question on their own later. Who learned more? The second person, because they made sure they actually understood it. The key is not to move on from a question until you can do it completely on your own. Don't rely on just reading math. Practice it actively and manage your time smartly. Some people worry that if they look at the solution before trying, they'll just end up memorizing it. But understanding isn't the same as memorizing. If you truly understand the logic, you can break it down. A leads to B, B leads to C, and C leads to D. Memorizing just skips to A leads to D. But real understanding means you can walk through each step with clarity. This deliberate attempt after answer method has helped me save time, avoid frustration, and most importantly, learn math in a meaningful way. Ready to transform the way you think about math and maybe even your future career? If your answer is yes, I'm about to hook you up with some of the best math resources out there, tailored to different levels and backgrounds. Step two, math's genius guides. Let's start with a powerhouse platform, artofproblemsolving.com. This website offers an incredibly rich collection of resources for students from elementary all the way to early college levels. Don't get too hung up on the grade labels though. These are high-level problems. 
And even if you're in your final year of high school, it might be smart to begin with earlier materials to build a strong foundation. Think of it like building a toolbox. Master the basics, and those same tools will help you tackle more complex challenges later on. Speaking of toolboxes, if you're just beginning to dip your toes into advanced math, a concise introduction to Pure Mathematics by Martin Liebeck is a solid pick. It gently introduces higher-level math ideas without being overwhelming. Already comfortable with high school-level math? Then check out Problem-Solving Strategies by Arthur Engel. This book is packed with problems pulled from national and international math contests, and it doesn't just give you problems. It teaches you how to think about solving them. I know someone who worked through every problem in that book and later won four gold medals at the International Math Olympiad. Coincidence? What? Probably not. For those who are a bit older or looking for a more philosophical approach to math, you'll love Love and Math by Edward Frenkel. It's part autobiography, part deep dive into the hidden beauty of math, and a great reminder that math is more than just equations. It's a creative and human pursuit. Ultimately, becoming good at math is kind of like becoming a skilled mechanic. Sure, you need tools, but it's not just about having the fanciest ones. A master mechanic can fix more with a basic $15 to $20 kit than a beginner can with a whole high-end garage. The same goes for math. It's not about how much you know, but how well you use what you've got. Step 3. Slow to fast to brain mode switch. Ever wonder why sometimes you read something and realize none of it stuck? That's your slow brain at work. It's in charge of conscious thinking, reasoning, and problem solving. It takes effort and focus. Then there's your fast brain. The one that instantly recognizes a dog or knows that 4 plus 4 equals 8. It's built on intuition and pattern recognition, formed through repetition and familiarity. Great math learners rely on both. They've practiced so many core concepts that solving problems feels effortless. Their slow brain worked hard at first, but with enough repetition, those efforts shifted into fast brain instincts. The goal? Practice until your brain stops struggling and starts recognizing. That's how you turn conscious effort into intuitive skill. Step 4. Teach to learn the Feynman Technique or Protégé Effect. The Feynman Technique is a powerful method to test your understanding. If you can explain a concept in simple language as if teaching a child, then you truly get it. Albert Einstein said, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it yourself. I often use this by pretending to teach or by explaining concepts to friends when they ask questions. It's a great way to check if I've really understood something. That's why famous science fiction author Robert Heinlein rightly said, when one teaches to learn the real problem. Most of us were taught to passively learn math, watching, rereading, highlighting. But your brain treats all that like background noise. What actually works is active learning, solving problems, making mistakes teaching others. Think of it like learning to drive. You don't master driving by watching videos, you get behind the wheel. Math is the same, you learn it by doing it. What you can do. Start asking why behind every formula. Engage with the problems. Talk through your thinking. Try teaching a concept to someone else, even if that someone is your dog or your mirror. Because here's the truth, becoming good at math isn't about being a genius. It's about practicing the right way. In math, mistakes usually come from two places, not understanding the concept, or being careless with what you already know, like forgetting to leave in the units, or maybe you mistype your numbers into the calculator rule, and here you're going to lose marks due to being too careless. To improve, you need to tackle both. Build your understanding and sharpen your accuracy. Focus on truly understanding concepts during class and ask questions. Then consistently practice math daily, Spread your study over time and target your weak areas to turn them into strengths, giving more time to those topics until you are confident. Fill the knowledge gaps. Many people think they're bad at math, but I believe everyone can become good at it. Math anxiety is common, and it's normal to feel confused, especially if you've missed a foundational concept. Math is layered, and each topic builds on previous ones. You can't understand calculus without first learning algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. So, if you're struggling, it's not because you're not smart. It's likely because you're missing a piece of that foundation. The key is to believe you can get better and to go back and fill in the gaps. Once you do, everything starts making sense. Step 5. Confidence boosts math skills. Confidence plays a huge role in how well you do in math. When you're stressed or anxious, your brain struggles with complex tasks like problem solving. So, staying calm is key. 1. Sleep and fuel. Get at least 8 hours of sleep and eat well before the test. Less than 7 hours? Not worth it. 2. Stay calm. Use techniques like meditation to manage nerves and get in the zone. 3. Build belief. 
As you improve and solve tougher problems, your confidence will grow naturally and so will your scores. 4. Enjoy the process. Celebrate the small wins, appreciate the beauty in solving hard problems. Have belief in you and celebrate by commenting, I am good at math easy way actually. Got a bro sis or study buddy who needs this? Don't gatekeep, subscribe and share the video with them and help them level up too. It's easy way actually.